I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin, author of three books about succulents and using them in gardens, landscapes, and containers. In this video, I'm going to show you three different succulent gardens on the Palos Verdes Peninsula of Los Angeles. Each garden offers great plants and beautiful, practical ways to use them. At Nancy Zinner's garden in Rolling Hills Estates, a long, low slope serves as a backdrop for the pool and outdoor sitting areas and is visible from the home's windows. The slope is bordered at the top by pepper trees and a privet hedge and along the bottom by a lawn. Low stacked stone walls retain soil and give plants something to cascade over. To make the slope a colorful, textural, easy care patchwork, Nancy's landscape designer chose a combination of succulents and mounding shrubs. Succulents include blue Senecio mandrillaceae and taller blue-green Senecio vitalis, canary island aeoniums, and variegated elephant's food. The slope's woody perennials are good companions for succulents and stay compact given occasional trimming. Breath of Heaven shrubs, which look feathery from afar and echo the color of golden jade in pool pots, are complemented by purple loripetalum. Gray-green westringia, prostrate rosemary, and lavender weave throughout the tapestry. Year-round, white striped dwarf formiums at the top of the slope echo the light color of the stone, add upright interest, and contrast with the hedge. Convolvulus adds morning glory purple flowers in spring. I love how late afternoon shadows make the lawn glow golden like the breath of heaven. I knew the owner of this home had a good eye for color when I saw how garage doors were painted the same gray-blue of curbside agaves. June Trahern's garden in Rancho Palos Verdes sits atop a canyon with views to the west and north. Much of the landscaping is drought-tolerant succulents along with tropicals that like a maritime climate. June is an artist specializing in ceramics and jewelry. Her colorful and inviting patio garden could be duplicated anywhere. June explains how she uses colorful glass to visually combine her kitchen and other indoor areas with the outdoors. This stacked arrangement here? Well, what I did was I bought the two tables and with the, uh, just, with the intention of just to have plants on. And I, and I stacked them because you've got the lower ones and a little bit higher and a little bit higher. And sometimes I use risers to let me move this one so that the things at the back get their own beauty. And so they, it's lower a little higher and even higher. The same with this side. And the thing I love about the cobalt blue, uh, and I picked it up in different places, is when the sun shines through and then when the lights are on at night, it shows, you know, the blue, you, you see right through the glass. And I just think that that little bit of blue just really, you don't find it in flowers, but you can find it in accents. I wouldn't have expected the cobalt blue to work so well. It, it, it does work well. And then I'm always on the lookout for little tables. And they, just to sit a plant on. And I think when you do a, a seating like this, you not only can visit with whoever you're with and enjoy and have somewhere to put your food and drinks, but you have the beauty around you. It's not all one level. And then I made these many years ago and I had different plants in them and then I put all the succulents in them. So it's all about little grouped areas to be able to sit and enjoy. I do have a few brighter reds, but I like, I like the brick red. I mean, you see it in the plants, you see it in some of my pots. I think the brick red and the cobalt blue is a wonderful combination. The light coming through the cobalt glass Yes, it really is a nice thing to do, or even a stained glass or something to uh, just to add interest, you know, to the seating area. You have to come inside and see the views because they really are nice.
Over the more than 40 years that Rod and Marjo de Ritter have lived in Rolling Hills Estates, they've torn out and redone their landscaping several times. The streetside front yard, which encompasses about a quarter acre, is now succulents large and small. It was the talk of the neighborhood when it was installed, and not everyone liked it. Did all the landscaping ourselves. We never had a gardener. Uh, the design was maybe done three, four times over yeah. over the last three, 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 four, three, 42 years. Took it out yeah. again, started yeah. all over. Yeah. But it was too and much. the succulent and the cacti we've had for the last 10 years because of the drought problem. That's very smart. So we were helpful doing the Makes saving the in, uh, water. Saving the water. And too. we have over time just gotten the whole garden cacti succulent and water saving ah perfect yeah and it certainly is a contrast to your neighbor's garden yes and i have to say when we put in the plans to do this garden the homeowners were very much against it <laughs> nobody wanted us to do it it well, we was had, different we had to have grass That's we all. had to have yeah, grass everybody. like everybody else and then this is the land of lawns we've just done it they said go ahead we don't like it but now everybody comes by and takes pictures yes and they praise us on a beautiful garden the de ritter succulent garden reminds me of the famous one at the huntington botanic gardens 36 miles away notable low water trees are palo verde and melaleucas this garden has a wonderful combination of low water drought tolerant plants and of course in this area with a strong maritime influence just about everything thrives. The only issue that people occasionally have is fungus and I'm not seeing that as a problem here. You have your spineless apuntia here. I think it's spineless. I'm not going to risk it. Coming into bloom your Euphorbia amic variegata that gives wonderful height interest and ornamental grasses. Find additional information in the video description and on my website. I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. My goal is to inspire you to enjoy using succulents in fun and creative ways in your own garden and outdoor living spaces. Please know I appreciate your comments and do subscribe and hit the like button. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. Thank you for joining me.